how do we make our essential intelligence the data the news the research the analytics how do we distribute them through as many channels as possible we make our data available through traditional desktops through feeds through apis and now with ai we make our data answered as agents available and distributed through multiple ecosystems welcome to technovation i'm your host peter hai my guest today is swami kochalakota Swami is the Executive Vice President and Chief Digital Solutions Officer of S&P Global and the Executive Sponsor of Kensho, an artificial intelligence technology innovator within S&P Global. S&P Global provides financial information and analytics, among other services, and earns in excess of $14 billion in annual revenue. Swami has held his current role for a year and a half, following six years as the company's Global Chief Information Officer. With a focus on leading-edge technology, digital ecosystems, and artificial intelligence, Swami and his team are responsible for building a secure, scalable, and resilient foundation that helps S&P Global power global markets. He's also responsible for driving the company's digital transformation and delivering productivity improvements for customers and colleagues. I look forward to hearing about all the above and more through this conversation. Swami, welcome back to Technovation. It's great to speak with you again. Peter, yeah, thanks a lot for having me. I think this is my second time and I'm very happy to be here. Oh, it's my pleasure and I'm, I'm glad you've returned. Well, let, let's begin, if you don't mind, Swami, with uh, S&P Global's business. Can you provide a bit of an overview beyond what I already have uh, as to the business you're in? You know, we are a 160-year-old company, and we take a lot of pride with a mission that we are responsible for accelerating progress. What do we mean by that? Uh, you know, markets, global markets in particular, play a very important role in this. Uh, and we provide essential intelligence for all the market participants when we say essential intelligence, we mean data, which is the core of AI, the research, insights, analytics, benchmarks, and workflows. So that's what we do for the financial industry, the global markets, and we take a lot of pride. Like I said, we started about 165 years ago at the beginning of the industrial revolution. At the time, people were looking for a lot of uh, capital, the debt capital markets. We provide a lot of transparency back then. Since that time, Peter, we expanded into new asset new asset classes, new markets, and new challenges, and we continue to do so. I'm very happy to be at S&P Global. Yeah, well, what, what a storied history as you describe, and what an interesting area you play that is centers so much around the responsibilities you and your team uh, deliver as well. And I'd love to get into those responsibilities because they've grown considerably since we were last on the record together. Um, describe, if you would, your role as Chief Digital Solutions Officer. Yeah, I used to be the Chief Information Officer, uh, and of course, uh, we went through the agile revolution. And when AI came in, uh, I took on the mandate for the AI for the company. And we then adjusted the role and the title to have as chief digital solutions officer. You know, at the end of the day, I see myself as the first technologist for the company, uh, you know, first cheerleader for technology. And we continue to do a lot of uh, evolution and transformation. And describe, if you would, Swami, the team you lead. Um, I, uh, across the nearly seven years you've been with the company, I'm sure it's evolved a bit, new skill sets that, are, that have grown in importance and so on. Talk a bit about that team, if you would. Yeah, so we went through what I call as a project to product transition. Almost seven years ago, we started. And as a result, the core product development really reports to the you know, key business leader who is driving that product. And every other function uh, is part of uh, my team, including the corporate platforms, the core infrastructure. Uh, we have the chief AI officer is part of my team. A information security is part of my team. Understood. Yeah, thank you for, for that overview. And great to hear that you've, you've uh, gone through the product operating model shift as well. Certainly a, a key ingredient for, for digital transformation and, and operating effectively in the digital age. Um, describe, if you would, Kensho and its mission. I talked a little bit about it at the at the outset, and I'd love to hear a bit more from you um, as to the the role this plays within the organization and some of the fruit of the work uh, that the team has developed. See, at SMP Global, based on our history, we have the largest collection of connected, curated, and high quality data. About um, six years ago. We knew that uh, AI is going to be a very, very important uh, element of uh, taking our data to the next level. 
and we looked at uh, the capabilities. Uh, we have some homegrown capabilities, but we invested in a company called the Ken Show, and we made a lot of progress with them. And we eventually acquired that company way back in 2018. Uh, and since, since that time, we kept that company separate, the culture separate. It is our speedboat and they help us drive and they are like our eyes and uh, insights into technology revolution. So we kept that company separate and they've been navigating us through AI back then, data science, data engineering, and now generative AI revolution. Fascinating and, and interesting that I love the speedboat analogy, of course, but the 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 thought process of keeping them separate and making sure that the ways in which they operate uh, continue to to foster and forge great innovation for the organization, especially given the sanctity of data that you referenced earlier in our conversation as well. And, and um, this leads to a, a related question, which is the assembly of digital ecosystems. It sounds like even Kensho was an example of that, one that became came into the fold upon acquisition. But you've thought, of, I know, deeply about the curation of a digital ecosystem, Swami. And I wonder if you could talk a bit about the constitution of it, who makes up the ecosystem and, and how you think about the process of managing it as well. One of our key pillars is how do we make uh, our essential intelligence, all the things that I've talked about, the, the data, the news, the research, the analytics, how do we distribute them through as many channels as possible? So if you take data, we make our data available through traditional desktops. Uh, we make our data available through feeds, through APIs. And then as part of this uh, new mandate to do digital ecosystems, we make our data available through various data cloud providers as well. And now with AI, we make our data answered as agents and skills available and distributed through multiple ecosystems. For example, we recently announced that in Microsoft Teams, you can actually make our agent available as a colleague in Microsoft Teams so that you can interact with our skills. Very interesting, Swami. And, and I... All of this, I mean, given the, the the importance of data that has been a thread pulled through this this uh, conversation from the outset, talk a bit about how you've thought about the organization of that data. As you talked about uh, at the beginning of our conversation, 165-year history, extraordinary amount of data accumulated across that time, needless to say, and uh, getting to the point of ensuring that data is organized and secure, governed well, et cetera, such that you can can derive value from it is no easy feat. And I wonder if you could talk about the evolution of that such that you've built the appropriate foundation to do the sorts of things you're describing here. We've been doing data long before data and AI became uh, became you know, a new trend. You know, We do that by making sure that we manage the metadata very well. Uh, we have an internal system and a process to curate the metadata, the taxonomy and the ontology. And how do we connect the data with each other through various standards? You know, we have something called a CAP IQ ID that we're going to open up uh, so that everybody can refer to one ID. Uh, and also we are using AI to do named entity resolution. So connecting and curating the data so you can take the supply chain information to energy transition data to private markets data in a seamless way is what we do. That is the secret sauce. And more generally speaking, Swami, you've led a, a considerable digital transformation. Um, you talked about the product operating model, for example, which is certainly something that would be under the rubric there, I would, I would imagine. Can you talk a bit further about some of the foundational elements that you put in place from a transformation perspective that you're now taking an advantage of and parlaying in some interesting ways? Yeah, it goes back to nine years ago, we were a conglomerate. At the time, the new leadership came in and said, we need to be an enterprise and we started focusing specifically in financial information services. So that transition from conglomerate to an enterprise gave us the opportunity to look at our investments, and we said that we have to modernize the technology stack, and we should not just leave it uh, modernizing the technology stack, but at the same time, you have to modernize, you know, modernize the people and the processes as well. That's when we took, uh, you know, let's bring cloud, and a cloud-first mindset. And then we also said, let's bring agile mindset. And that has become the core foundation that we're able to build on the modern transformation with AI and generative AI. You know, without the cloud and without the cloud ad adoption, we wouldn't have been able to embrace AI uh, as much as we're able to do now. Yeah, fortunate that uh, you... 
undergone those sorts of steps to be able to more fully blossom uh, when it comes to the realm of artificial intelligence also. Um, as you think about uh, the role that your team can play in enhancing employee and customer productivity, I know these are, again, areas of responsibility for you and, and uh, uh, topics of innovation. Can you talk a bit about some of the levers you've pulled there uh, in order to, to make improvements relative to each? Yeah, see, when the buzz around AI came in and generative AI, uh, there isn't an area, any area in the company where we could see how AI could benefit, uh, whether it's benefiting the productivity of the customers. And then we said that, that the best way to do it is to have a framework. Our new CEO came up with a four framework with four Ps. What is the potential for AI? What is the productivity opportunities for AI? And then how do we carry our people along? And then how do we protect it? So those are the four P framework and we have a method to measure and invest so that we can actually get the benefits from it. So let's talk about the people. You know, SMP Global has a history of uh, relying on the people to say, am I going to embrace the new technology first uh, with, its apply with its usage or am I going to train our employees? So kind of uh, proverbial, does the supply come first or does the demand come first? We said that you have to supply has to come first before you think about the demand. So if you look at all the technological evolution, we were able to the first uh, response for us, how do I make this technology available to our employees so that they can learn and they can play with it? That's true with uh, the new age AI, with generative AI. That was the same thing with the decentralized finance uh, and blockchain. That was the same thing with the AR, VR uh, and other uh, innovations as well. So every time we go back and teach our employees first, and then have the employees drive that innovation. Some of the things such as AR, VR started off well, we trained our employees, uh, but they didn't turn out as big uh, as, and we didn't have to um, you know, waste a lot of time or resources, but we said we trained our employees, opportunity does not exist. With AI, we noticed that with especially generative AI, when we trained our employees, it is like growing like wildfire. So we have trained our employees, and also we gave them tools and technology. We built uh, what started as a like a GPT wrapper inside, uh, both for API and for employee use. And then we started adding more features. So today, that technology is uh, used widely inside the company where people author prompts, people take workflows, and then be able to share with other employees, uh, which we call Sparks. So the Spark ecosystem has enabled us to say, look, employees, you know who you're serving best, you know your work best, how can you now use the technology with AI? And as a result, all of our employees don't have the barrier of, uh, oh my God, what is AI is gonna do? They're embracing and they're sharing, they're learning. And as a result, we're able to help our customers uh, with AI much more than without the people tower. Very interesting well, and well explained, Swami. And as you think about the ongoing progress associated with this, are there uh, new use cases or future use cases that have you particularly excited? Yeah, so the, the one thing is going beyond like taking one shot prompt uh, and getting an answer, you know, loading a bunch of documents and getting insights. Uh, to me, that is, uh, you know, BAU and everybody has access to do it. What we are excited about is workflows. Um, so we built uh, with that uh, Spark system uh, an internal low-code, no-code platform called Flow that you now can take um, you know bunch of prompts, bunch of systems, and you can orchestrate your own workflow and then share that workflow. So if you are uh, helping investment bankers or investment banking analyst, you can actually write a Spark Flow talking to multiple systems and some prompts. And you can share it with your colleagues so that anybody who's helping uh, an investment banking analyst uh, can use that uh, flow. So I'm very much ex uh, excited about what AI can do with workflows uh, and how humans and agents will work uh, under these workflows. Very interesting. Are, are there other trends, uh, Swami, as you look to the future that particularly excite you that are starting to make their way onto your roadmap? What, what comes to mind? Well, I think the... AI is the new UI. If you look at what customers are trying to do, Peter, is that their uh, way of uh, consuming essential intelligence 
is changing. Uh, and while we still provide the existing channels, we're going to make it easy to be able to converse with our essential intelligence. And how you do that is going to be a differentiator in our view. So that's very interesting. AI is the new U UI and, and uh, the means of in consuming intelligence will change accordingly. And profound implications to what you're describing in a business that is that delivers intelligence for your customers. Uh, so needless to say, what you're describing has impacts inside of S&P Global, but also very importantly to the customers as well. I also wanted to ask you, uh, Swami, anything you've recently read, uh, watched and or listened to that you recommend to others? You know, with all the things that are happening uh, in the economy right now, um, I listen to Ian Bremmer, um, gives very good insights into what's happening from a geopolitical backdrop perspective. And I also listen to Stratchery, um, you know, one of the podcasts. Uh, I find that to be very insightful on that uh, nice intersection between technology and business. I would recommend those two uh, as the way to get plugged in both on the geopolitics and implications to technology. Yeah, great suggestions both, certainly, Swami. Much appreciated. And thank you so much for a phenomenal conversation uh, covering a variety of different topics here, representative of the remarkable work you and your team are doing, your expanded responsibilities, even some of the areas that we might be looking uh, looking towards in, in the coming months and years for continued progress relative to topics like AI and beyond. Uh, it's been a great conversation. Thank you so much. Yeah, Peter, thank you. I've been a long-term listener, and I said uh, coming back again. So thanks a lot for uh, having me here. You do great work. And I look forward uh, you know, having you uh, talk to many, many guests. Uh, thank you so much, Swami.